Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on Newton's third law and applying it to exam questions. Now Newton's third law states if two bodies exert forces on each other these forces have the same magnitude but in opposite directions. I'm going to use an example to demonstrate this law with my cat Ray Ray. Now Ray Ray sits regularly on my table and Ray Ray has a downward force acting on the table which is his weight. This is his mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity in newtons. Now for him to remain happily on my table, there must be an equal and opposite force to his weight, which is the normal reaction. In short, if an object A exerts a force onto an object B, then object B must exert a force of equal magnitude and in the opposite direction back onto A. This is an important law, and it represents a certain symmetry in nature. Now let's look at motion with Newton's third law. This is the concept that most students struggle with, so I'm going to quickly explain using the concept of an elevator. When you're in an elevator and there is no acceleration, the force from the elevator acting opposite to your weight will be the normal reaction. This is because of Newton's third law. Just like my cat Ray Ray sitting on the table. He remains happily on the table, and you remain happily in the elevator. Now let's put this elevator in motion. It's accelerating upwards. As it accelerates upwards, we all feel that downward force as we move upwards. So this means we have a different net force due to acceleration. So there'll be a different normal reaction acting upwards. So combining Newton's second law and third law, this means we can resolve vertically upwards i.e. taking up as the positive direction. So using Newton's second law, which states the net force is equal to mass times the acceleration, and taking up as the positive direction, let's resolve this problem where the elevator is accelerating upwards. Well, R is our upward force, subtract our downward force, which is weight, and this gives us the net force mass times acceleration. Therefore, to find the normal reaction when accelerating upwards, it's made of the mass times the acceleration and the weight. The same applies to the situation where you're in an elevator and you're moving downwards. We all feel that upward feeling as we travel downwards. Same as before, this means we have a different net force due to the direction and acceleration. So there will be an, a different normal reaction acting on you by the elevator. Combining Newton's second and third law again, this means we can resolve vertically downwards, taking down as our positive direction. So, using Newton's second law, where the net force is equal to mass times the acceleration, let's resolve this problem where the elevator is accelerating downwards. Well, mg is our downward force, subtract our upward force, the normal reaction, and this gives us our net force mass times acceleration. So therefore, the normal reaction when accelerating downwards is the weight subtract mass times acceleration. So now we've recapped on Newton's third law, let's have a look at a past exam question. Here, question states, a woman of mass 60 kilograms stands on the horizontal floor inside the elevator as shown. The elevator ascends vertically with a constant acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. By modeling the woman as a particle, find the magnitude of the normal reaction exerted by the floor of the elevator onto the woman. In this exam question, it does stipulate that we use g to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So please do check what value of g your exam board wants you to use. So now, let's draw our force diagram focusing on the normal reaction exerted by the floor of the elevator onto the woman. Here my force diagram states the particle or the woman is ascending vertically, so therefore we know the acceleration is upwards. We know this is the surface of the elevator and we know this is the weight of our woman. And this is the normal reaction exerted by the floor of the elevator onto the woman. So now let's substitute what we know. Well, we know there's an upward acceleration of 2 meters per second squared. We know the weight of the woman is 60 g newtons, and we're asked to work out the normal reaction. So let's resolve our forces using Newton's second law, where the net forces is equal to mass times acceleration. 
Remember, I'm taking up as the positive direction. So let's substitute in. R subtract R60G is equal to mass times the acceleration. Therefore, our normal reaction subtract 60G is equal to 120. Rearranging so R is the subject, we worked out the normal reaction to be 120 plus 60G. Knowing that G is 9.8 meters per second squared, I've worked out our normal reaction to be 708 newtons to three significant figures. Now let's have a look at another exam question. Here it states figure one shows a large bucket used by a crane on a building site to move materials between the ground and the top of a building. The mass of the bucket is 15 kilograms. The bucket is attached to a vertical cable with the bottom of the bucket being horizontal. The cable is modeled as light and inextensible. When the bucket is on the ground, a bag of cement of mass 25 kilograms is placed inside the bucket. Now the bucket with the bag of cement moves vertically upwards with a constant acceleration of 0.2 meters per second squared. The question also states that air resistance is modeled as being negligible. The question wants us to find the tension in the cable. Remember these key words and what they mean when we're modeling and making assumptions. We have the word light, which means we ignore the mass of the cable. We have the word inextensible, which means that the cable doesn't stretch. Now we also know that the bucket has a horizontal base, so therefore there's no incline. It also states that the air resistance is negligible, so that means we ignore forces due to air resistance. The exam board stated that we need to use G to be 9.8 meters per second squared. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Now we have enough information to model figure one in a force diagram. First of all, remember tension is the upward pulling force in this question and we know weight is the downward force. We also know both the cement and the bucket is moving upwards with the same acceleration. And because of this, we represent the bucket and cement as a single object. So now let's substitute. Well, we know the total weight is 40 G Newtons because the total mass is 15 kilograms add 25 kilograms. We don't know T, but we do know the object is accelerating upwards with an acceleration of 0.2 meters per second squared. So let's write out our equation of motion, taking up as the positive direction. Using Newton's second law, where the net force is equal to mass times the acceleration, let's resolve. Well, we know our upward force is the tension, subtract our downward force, which is the weight, is equal to mass times the acceleration. Therefore, we know T minus 40G is equal to 8. Rearranging, T is equal to 40G add 8. Now we know from the exam question that it wanted me to use G to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So substituting in, I know T is 400 newtons to three significant figures. There's a second part to this exam question. And it states, at the top of the building, the bag of cement is removed and a box of tools of mass 12 kilograms is now placed in the bucket. Later on, the bucket with the box of tools is moving vertically downwards with a constant deceleration of 0.1 meters per second squared. Once again, air resistance is negligible and we're asked to find the magnitude of the normal reaction between the bucket and the box of tools. Now, we need to draw our force diagram, but please do remember in our force diagram, we're only focusing on the box of tools and the bucket. So let's insert our forces. The forces being applied by the tools onto the bucket, we have the weight of the tools being 12 G Newtons. We're asked to work out the normal reaction, and we also know the positive direction is now downwards 
of minus 0.1 meters per second squared because it states a deceleration. So just like before, let's resolve, taking downwards as our positive direction. Using Newton's second law and taking downwards as our positive direction, 12g subtract r is equal to our mass times the acceleration. Therefore, 12g subtract r is equal to minus 1.2. Rearranging to find r, this means 12g subtract minus 1.2 gives me our normal reaction to be 118.8 newtons. Now, this question does ask me to round it to three significant figures, giving me 119 newtons to three significant figures. Now, let's have a look at our last question. Here the question states that a light serving elevator is attached to a vertical light and inextensible string. The serving elevator carries two masses, P and Q. Now the mass of P is 0.4 kilograms and the mass of Q is 0.6 kilograms. P rests on top of Q. Now the light service elevator is accelerating upwards with a constant acceleration of 0.5 meters per second squared and we're asked to find the tension in the string. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. But do remember those key words. Light means no mass. Inextensible means it's impossible to stretch. And take G to be 9.8 meters per second squared. Drawing our force diagram, I've taken the elevator and P and Q as one complete object. This is because they're all accelerating upwards with an acceleration of 0.5 meters per second squared. So therefore, the total mass is 0.4, add on 0.6, and remember our elevator is light, so there's no additional mass there. So the total weight is 1 g newtons. The tension is what we're trying to work out, and we're identifying up as the positive direction. So let's resolve our forces taking up as our positive direction. Well, we know the tension subtract the weight is equal to mass times the acceleration. Therefore, we know tension subtract g is equal to 0.5. And rearranging, this means the tension is 0.5 plus g. Remember, the exam question states that I need to use 9.8 meters per second squared as g. So therefore, t is 10.3 newtons. Now let's have a look at the second part of the question. It says, find the force exerted on mass q by mass p. So we're only looking at P and Q, not the elevator, just P and Q. And we know there's one force that P exerts onto Q, and this is the weight. But Newton's third law helps us by finding the force exerted on P by Q, which is the normal reaction. Remember, Newton's third law states that if we work out the normal reaction of P, this is equal to the downward force acting on Q, because it's equal but in the opposite direction. So therefore, working out the normal reaction will give us the total downward force exerted on mass Q by P. So substituting in, we know the weight of P is 0.4 g newtons. So let's work out the normal reaction. Well, taking up as our positive direction, let's resolve our forces. The upward force is R, so R subtract 0.4 g is equal to mass times the acceleration. The normal reaction subtract on 0.4 g equals 0.2. Rearranging states that the normal reaction is 0.2 add 0.4 g. Remember the question wants me to take g to be 9.8 meters per second squared. So I know the normal reaction is 4.12 newtons to three significant figures. So what does this mean? It means the force exerted on mass Q by mass P is 4.12 Newtons. And this downward force exerted onto mass Q by mass P is found by working out the normal reaction, 
and knowing Newton's third law. Now let's do the last question. Here we're asked to find the force exerted on mass Q by the serving elevator. So this means we're looking at the force acting upwards from the serving elevator onto Q. Therefore, using Newton's third law, we know it's equal in magnitude to the opposite direction. So therefore, we're finding the downward force exerted onto the serving lift by Q. Remember, the serving elevator has no weight, and we also know that the tension is 10.3 Newtons, like we worked out before. So in order for us to find the force exerted on mass Q by the serving elevator, we have to find the downward force exerted on the serving elevator by Q. Taking 0.5 meters per second squared as our upward force, and using Newton's second law, let's resolve. Well, T is our upward force, subtract S, which is the force exerted on the serving lift by Q, is equal to zero, which is the mass of the serving elevator, multiplied by 0.5. Therefore, substituting T to be 10.3, we now have this equation. Rearranging to make S the subject, we know S is 10.3 newton. Therefore, the force exerted on mass Q by the serving lift is 10.3 newtons. Because we've worked out the downward force of our serving elevator, which we know is the same magnitude, but in an opposite direction. A common misconception is when students draw an incorrect force diagram, concentrating on the object Q and not the serving elevator. So, in summary, next time you see a cat on a table, or if you experience those forces when you accelerate in an elevator, think of Newton's third law, and how acceleration or no motion can change the forces acting on an object. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next video.